Danny is one of the most gracious, most merciful, my fellow citizens. At these hard circumstances, our country is experiencing. President Mohammed Hosni Mubarak has decided to waive the office of the President of the Republic and instructed the Supreme Council of the Armed Forces to run the affairs of the country. May God guide our steps. There you go, short but sweet. Hosni Mubarak has gone. Let's go live to Cairo. Eamon Mokildin is there. What do you make of that, Eamon? Eamon, I, I, you can't hear us because of the, the noise from the protesters there, the jubilation in Tahrir Square at that, uh, that brief announcement from Vice President Omar Suleiman there. Listen to that crowd, that's what they've been waiting for. Hosni Mubarak has gone. Since Mubarak's fall from power, activists globally have been asking could this be the time to open the Rafa crossing? We must not watch, start to add actions, resonate more than words, and it's the international responsibility not to watch it before it becomes irreversible. So we must outreach everyone. You can volunteer, you can give a smile to everyone, you can donate. There is a lot of things, and it's important, each of us, just to act. Don't wait for others to say, what can my action do? Don't underestimate your action. Whatever the size of your action, it makes a difference in others' lives. So what can I say to the people? Please, move forward. Think in a positive way. Have hope. Have faith and take action. It's a matter of action, it's a matter of urgency not to win. Families have been destroyed because of a blockade in which people can't get much needed medical care which is not available here in Gaza. What the Palestinian people need is their freedom as others in an independent state to feel the taste and not to wait for humanitarian aids to be independent as others and to build their future. Four years of a blockade. How is it possible? Can we consider ourselves truly to be humane when we are allowing this to continue? Although the action is being taken at short notice, he is determinedly hoping to gather enough momentum to reach out to those reduced to insignificance in the eyes of so many. here this used to be my home and um, after it destroyed I moved to live with my my family my mom okay this is uh, a document that saying that the home of the citizen Ahmed Yasser Arja and his brother Nasser we have Nasser here uh, have been destroyed totally from the uh, Israeli army and till now, till now there is um, no solution for his problem. No one came him back, no one built him a home. There's actually 16 members of the family and um, they're sharing this uh, very small home compared to what we're used to in the West for sure. And um, they could have another home, but unfortunately with this blockade, uh, the materials to bring here, which they have three truckloads of material, cement, steel, and stuff like this, can't be brought because the cost would be about ten times as expensive as it would have to be brought uh, by by the tunnels. Yes, all of this place used to be a, a camp. They name it by Block Zero. All of this area, and farther this way, and also this way. 
all of this area. So there's trucks, these trucks, there's three trucks. If those get in, then he will rebuild here or somewhere else, somewhere else. He's saying, no, I, I, I will not rebuild it again no. because- It's too yeah, dangerous. Yeah, it's too dangerous. If I rebuild it again, they will destroy it again and again. That's right. So, so those three trucks, if those three trucks get in, he's rebuilding a home elsewhere. Is that right? So, uh, here we go into the tunnels. Yeah, start off. It's already quite claustrophobic. You have to uh, bend down. I know there's no light on me at all, so uh, we have no light, very little light down here. It's, it's quite dusty as well, um, but here's uh They do that so the sand do not collapse, but inside there is no, 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 but if, if right. you come inside... Yeah, there's no light, yeah. Sand. See? This is all sand. Yeah. Yeah, sand. Yeah. This could collapse any time. If any bombing, like some uh, days we hear that the Egyptian side um, bombed, you know, all of this could collapse. Mahmoud! And Mahmoud. you can see here we have room. <laughs> Here we have some wood to protect the tunnel. Okay, there's no rooms in that tunnel because it is a um, small one. As you can see, it is. Be careful. If we keep on walking, we will reach Egypt soon. Okay, so we can. And and to bring in all the materials by the tunnels, which is the only way to get those materials in, is about ten times as expensive. Is that right? So yeah, I can't, I can't pay to get that material from the uh, tunnels. It's so, so expensive. Right. So we get the building materials in. We got one more home for a family to live in. Right. in Gaza once again and uh, the latest update on the Tower for Gaza march slash convoy to Gaza. It has been my wish and I've made no mistakes about it that uh, we should act now. The longer we wait the smaller the window of opportunity becomes. However there are many people who feel otherwise including the Egyptian army and uh, the powers that be. It seems that uh, our march is being thwarted in many different ways. In particular, several of the internationals who have come to Egypt 
to participate in this march have attempted to make it to Al-Arish and they have been blocked. Uh, it's clear that the authorities are not allowing any internationals out towards Al-Arish and towards Rafa. It seems like that order has come down from very high. In addition to that, we're having all sorts of problems now getting buses to be able to travel that way. We have more Egyptians than we could possibly take in buses. We have the money for several buses, several hundred people, but we cannot get the buses to travel out there. Again, there are orders clearly coming down to prevent this. In addition to that, we have some serious, serious trepidation and fear going on in Egypt right now. There are large groups of thugs that are moving around the streets, much like they did when Mubarak was still in office. These thugs are obviously quite dangerous and they're doing their best to intimidate the people. Aside from that, there are also reports of the Israelis uh, offering death squads to come and infiltrate the protesters in Tahrir Square at the behest of the Egyptian government, including Soleiman, and to offer their services to uh, commit assassination. So this kind of talk is going around as well. On that note, let me just say that I have to confirm the fact that myself and I know countless others will never be intimidated by any threats of assassinations or anything like that. Having been listed as a terrorist by the Israeli terrorists themselves, the IDF, I know for a fact that I will never be swayed and I know I'm not alone. If you try and kill us, threaten us, it will not matter. We will come back and we will be a part of liberating the people of Palestine. So what's happened is I've actually been asked to come and have a meeting with some of the, with some of the biggest uh, revolutionary leaders in Egypt. I'm very much looking forward to that meeting. I believe that we will set a date next week in which a huge protest, demonstration, march slash convoy to Gaza will take place. I do not believe that the Egyptian people are going to allow the Mubarak era blockade to continue too much longer. I understand and appreciate the fact that they're concentrating on their internal issues, but let us make no mistake. Those that say that there is no blockade of Gaza on the Egyptian side, you are wrong. Absolutely wrong. The Egyptians have opened up Rafa partially, which means a few hundred people a day are able to travel in and out. That is not an open border. If you try and get even people over there right now, it's being blocked, as in the case of the internationals who tried to get there in the last few days. So it's blocked that way. In addition to that, if you try and get building materials into Gaza right now, you're not going to be able to get those building materials in. That is a block, and there are people who are still homeless because they don't have building materials. So therefore, let us make no mistake, there is a blockade, an Egyptian blockade of Gaza, and that blockade needs to be ended forthwith. Let us not pretend. And those who are perpetuating the idea that Egypt has lifted the blockade, you're lying. So, stop being in the service of the blockade and the Israelis, ultimately, who are the ones who are ensuring this blockade. Let us be true. There is still a blockade and that blockade must be lifted. And I can tell you, on behalf of the people here in Gaza, it would be better to lift that blockade yesterday, much less today, and certainly not tomorrow. The longer we wait, the longer these people continue to suffer. So I hope we don't wait that much longer. Surely, if it was our children, we would be acting now. If we need to act tomorrow, fine, but let us not sit sit here and find ourselves a month, two months, six months down the road saying, now is not the time. We better not wait that much longer. Shame on us all.